Hey everyone, today I want to talk about Simplex FM's poly mode. In previous videos, I've only really covered the mono mode, but poly mode has a lot of really interesting applications and a couple caveats that I just wanted you to be aware of that I figured out through my own experimentation. I've just initialized all four tracks on Simplex FM, and now I'm going to turn it into poly mode, which I'll do by hitting this LRN button or learn and waiting for that LED to come on. So now we're in poly mode, and what's going to happen now is I've got this keyboard sending MIDI to channel 5, which is going to control the first track on Simplex. If I press one note, it's still just going to play that first track, but if I press more than one, it's going to distribute those notes across the other four tracks. And so, because I just initialized it, all of those different tracks have the same exact timbre, and so they're not going to be that different from one another, and it's going to sound a lot more like a conventional instrument. So when it comes to playing notes, if I play notes that are sent to track two, nothing is going to happen in poly mode. However, I can still change the CC values and the parameters for track two. So let me play this octave here. And right now I'm gonna be changing the distortion or the drive on track two. So if you wanted to, you could have four different like timbre presets assigned to different tracks that you load up, um, but still only have one track that's controlling the notes or sending notes to Simplex FM in poly mode. But there's another way to change the parameters and it's very interesting, I think. So if we go back and send some notes to that first track, let's send just four notes in the C major chord. Any parameter that I move right now is going to change every active track. So let's just have these first two. I'm going to add a ton of drive to them, then I'm going to play these other two notes. And so now, by just changing the parameters on only that first track, in poly mode I've made four different voices with slightly different timbres. A quick caveat though, while this is a lot of fun, uh, consider this. Right now, none of these parameters that I just adjusted actually reflect what the parameters of the first track are. And, like, I've got the parameters for the second track saved under here, the lead track on my OPZ, but none of them reflect what I just changed that second track to, because I was doing it all in poly mode and I was doing it all from the channel of this first track. So you're going to want to record or sample any cool sounds or instruments that you find in poly mode, because it's going to be very difficult to go back to those sounds afterward. Another cool function of this is that if you don't feel like initializing all the tracks, but you want them all to have the same sound, what you're able to do is I'm going to play four notes on this keyboard again, and then I'm going to load a preset from the bass track that's uh, going to affect all four of those voices. Note though that when you load a preset on your OPZ, it often doesn't send CCs out for that fourth page, so you may have to like manually adjust the parameters that you have there to make sure that they're the same between all tracks. So I'm gonna go ahead and play four notes here. And let me load a preset now. Beautiful. Let's make it a little bit less ugly. Okay, so let's go ahead and play four notes and then pick out a different preset. I don't know, I just find that really kind of interesting that I can just load a preset and then basically have it distributed across all four voices and give me one sort of cohesive um, polyphonic instrument. For the rest of the video, I'm going to be like demonstrating a few different instruments that you can create from poly mode. The first concept I want to talk about is what I'll call staggering. And so what that's going to be is I'm going to play all four notes and then I'm going to adjust a parameter, let go of one of the notes, adjust that parameter again, let go of other notes, and so on and so forth. So I'll end up with different values for the same parameter for all four tracks. So here's, here's what I mean by that. Let's go ahead and... So 
So now I have it so that the first track is going to be the cleanest. But if I have this holding down and I want to play the second track a bit, it has a little more distortion or drive. Now let's play this octave and hear what it sounds like. Let's bring it down. Let's stagger a couple other parts of it. So let's stagger the wave shapes, which is that first parameter. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, let's make it so, let's go the opposite way where we're gonna have the most distorted on the first track. So let's make it relatively clean all, right here. For this one, I'm gonna make it a little bit more distorted, a little more, and then all the way up. For the last part of this staggering experiment, I want to turn on cyclic envelope for all four voices. And now I'm going to go on that bass track, sending to the first track on Simplex FM, and I'm going to play four notes, and I'm going to change the envelope to be roughly the same. And I promise I'm going somewhere interesting with this. So I'm gonna make it so it's right in the middle, it should have kind of a wobble sound. And then I'm gonna make some of these even longer. And actually to compensate, let's go ahead and make um, this middle parameter a bit shorter for the ones that are have a longer envelope. Next, I'm going to set the destination for what the envelope is modulating to be FM source. I'm gonna make it fairly dramatic. And now I've turned off all the modulation. So for right now, what I think I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna make this a bit weird. I'm going to play these first three and I'm gonna make it so that the first three voices are modulated by the fourth, but I'm gonna make it so that the fourth voice is modulated by the first three. This is going to sound ugly and uh, hopefully it's fun. So what if I just play a chord up here and then I play a lower note with, on the fourth track that's gonna be distorted? I don't feel like playing with transposition right now, but another thing you could do is you could transpose it so that that fourth track is higher or lower or any of these tracks are offset from the other tracks. So one of the cool things with Simplex FM is, especially in poly mode, you can play around with how the different voices affect each other. And I've got a couple different ideas for making one voice different. For my examples, I'm always going to make the last voice different, just like I did in that last example, but you could always make it the first voice, second voice, third voice, whatever you want to do. It's just kind of neat, I think, when there's one track that kind of disrupts the others. So I'm gonna turn off the cyclic envelope for all the voices, and then we're gonna start doing things that'll be the same for the first three tracks, and then different for the fourth voice. So the first one is I want all of the first three to say, stay completely silent until the last voice plays. Let's give that a try. I was having some issues earlier when I was rehearsing this video, but I, I think I can do it now. So here's how I'm going to accomplish that. I'm gonna to go to the bass track and I'm gonna play a chord. And then I'm gonna change the volume to being zero. So we can't hear this chord at all. We know it's being played, but we can't hear it. This fourth voice is actually also silent, but I'm going to make it so that its envelope is going to modulate the volume of the other tracks. So I just changed the source to be there, and I'm gonna make it so it makes the other tracks quite a bit louder um, as it goes through its envelope. So I'm gonna make the envelope a little longer so we can kind of hear this a bit better, but let's just say we got the C major chord, silent, right? Uh, 
Oh, but one thing that can happen is that if you have overlapping notes, some of the voice stealing can get a bit tricky with this. So that was just an example of that. Not an intentional example, but that's what happened. So silent again. So we still can't hear that last track. So let's go ahead and increase the volume on it. Just that way it makes, you know, even more of a difference. So to make it even weirder, let's make it so that, that last track only has a comb filter. That goes on for quite a bit. And so because this is only being affected by the envelope, the comb filter isn't going to cause us to hear those first three tracks again. That almost sounds like a harmonica. That was really weird. So the next two experiments here are going to be making it so that the last voice is a drone and kind of hearing what that would sound like. It'll basically give you three notes that you a three note instrument that you can play and a fourth note that if you hit it while the other three are active, will keep going on and on. So here's how I'll accomplish this. On my fourth track, I'm going to make it so that the release is just set at the maximum. And I'm gonna make it so that the envelope, the attack is just very short. So basically, as soon as I press it, we've got that drone. So I'm going to adjust these first three tracks to make sure we can actually hear them. And let's make it so that they're maybe a little bit kind of darker. Um, What we've got here is a very strange instrument where if I play all these, like that sounds fine, but then I could do. So in that last one, I had a bit of overlap on the notes. And so as a result, that fourth note started to control the first track. So I just figured I'd let it go for that demo. Let's adjust the tr last track to make sure its volume is up. And let's make it so that the envelope has no sustain, a little bit of an attack. Um, the shape is just really like a sharp attack. And then there's a bit of release here. So that's what I'm gonna do for this track. And this track is gonna affect the FM of the other three tracks. So this is pretty similar to the example I did before, but I'm just gonna get you know a bit more intense with it this time. So let's go ahead and go back and play our... Actually, I'm gonna go ahead and, and spend a bit of time making this sound a little bit more pleasant. Okay, so now I've adjusted the sound as I want, and I'm going to make it so that all of these are modulated by that last track. And I'm gonna make it... just initialized the voices and turned poly mode back on. So now what we have is exactly what we had at the very beginning. 
And this time, let's just go ahead and make this really short and plucky, all of these sounds. So we're gonna make the sustain off, and we're gonna make this uh, pretty, pretty short. But I'm going to make it so that they all have a pretty long uh, comb filter. And then from here, let's make it so that, uh, you know, this is gonna be a bit silly, but let's just make it so that the fourth track, well, let's see. The fourth track can be affected by the first, third track can be affected by the second, second track can be affected by the fourth, and the first track can be affected by, uh, let's just do like the third, I don't know. And let's turn up the FM amount. So this should sound really gross in a second here. I don't know. I just think that there's a lot of really interesting things to explore here. Hopefully you enjoyed this video because I like making stuff like this and a lot of what I do with music in my spare time is just kind of like little experiments like this. They're not really experiments, but it's just me asking a question of, wait, what if I had the instrument interact in this way? Or what if I tried this? And so I think Simplex FM is great for that. And uh, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.